Hello everyone, hope you all are doing very well. If your objective is to learn about chat GPT from a perspective of what it is, what is the role of GPT and how this chat GPT actually trained to generate the results as most of the folks have already seen worldwide, this video is going to be very helpful to you. In this video, just using the whiteboard, I decided to explain you three concepts. First, what is chat GPT? Second, the role of GPT in the chat GPT. And third, how chat GPT was trained so that the results you are seeing are being generated. So based on our experience, we know that the chat GPT has underneath a large language model which can take a text input and depending on your input, it can generate the text output. So this large language model, which is in the core or at the core of chat GPT has all the expertise it needs to understand the input text and based on its understanding, it can generate the output text. So from text, input to the text output. So if we would want to understand chat GPT, we need to first understand the role of GPT. The GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. So if you would want to understand chat GPT, you need to understand the GPT and in the GPT all three things generative pre-trained transformer are very important to understand. Generative is basically generate new content. And in this scenario, it's the text. Second is a pre-trained. It means the machine learning model is actually using the pre-trained, means the large language model, which is being at the core of chat GPT has already been previously trained. And finally, the transformer, so it is using the transformer architecture. We have seen the results of generative AI in the text content last few years. For example, Google email, you have seen that a word a sentence completion that is also available in your Outlook. So depending on various application you are going to use, you will find the generate, generation of new content by using the generative AI model has already been very popular. Not only text, images can also be generated, but that is not point of our discussion today. The pre-trained is the previously trained. It means the model which has, is being used is cause it has already been trained. It means the model which you are using is not training at the given time. By the time you are using the model, that model has already been previously trained. And finally, it is using the transformer architecture. And for the transformer, we would like to use this architecture, which has been proposed by Google in 2017. And this transformer is actually using the encoder and the decoder based architecture to process the information and generate the text output. So same architecture is using encoder and the decoder to process the information as input and then generating the output. So if we would want to understand the chat GPT really thoroughly, understanding the GPT is definitely going to help. However, because the chat GPT is actually a conversational model, it means you are going to interact with chat GPT in a sequence of conversation and that sequence has to be understood and retained by the internal model. So we can say that the, the way the chat GPT core model has been trained, it is actually trained based on the instructions. So you can also say that the, the fine tuning or the, the training has been done it is designed as a chat chatbot or the conversational model. One thing we can also just note ourselves that if you would want to understand more about the, the conversational model of training, 
then the chat GPT is actually using instruct GPT design. So for those who are interested, they can actually look into the instruct GPT to even learn more about chat GPT. So that is our very first part is that what is chat GPT. In the next step, we will look into the progression of the GPT models. So we have already seen that GPT-1, GPT-2, GPT-3 and very recently we have also seen the release of GPT-4 for I think it's specific only limited release has not been available to everybody but between GPT-3 and GPT-4 there is also the GPT-3.5. So this is the model which came around 2018 because in 2017 was the transformer architecture released by Google. So GPT-1 came 2018, 2019, 2020 time frame and then we have seen that chat GPT was somewhere here in 2022 and now in 2023 we have seen the GPT-4. So if we want to understand what is available in GPT-4, there should be a specific topic already. However, in order to understand the progression of these GPT models, you can understand the power behind the chat GPT large language model. GPT-1 actually had about 117 million parameters. The second one, the GPT-2 actually had about 1.5 billion parameters and then the GPT-3 and GPT-4 as we really go you can see that GPT-3 has about 170 billion parameter and GPT-4 is supposed to have the 1 trillion parameters when it's going to be publicly available. So the first thing to understand the more and more parameter it means the model itself has been trained for a larger content very first model which supposed to have supposed to train about under 10 gig of content then the gpt2 model was actually trained for about under 50 gig of content and then the gpt3 was trained for a lot more data where it has like a 600 gb of content and that was the text plus a lots of other the complete taxes like a web content plus lots of documents lots of very specific uh, certain books so the depending on content gpt3 model was trained the results were also the higher accurate depending on the predecessors but also more coherent yeah definitely there was some misinformation as well as the, there was some hallucination built into the results but at least comparative to the previous one the results coming out from gpt3 are far more better so what makes this better we have already seen that more parameters a lot bigger size of content but also the speed was good because the input tokens means the total number of tokens start as the input here i think it has about 512 tokens it start with 1024 token here we had 2048 tokens and a token is actually a, the, a group of characters and you can think that for a token to be if we look into the token that one token is about four characters so you can say that about 100 token are equal to about 75 words and this is the input tax or the tax which has been trained has to be converted into the token. So the question you are going to pass through your chat GPT or GPT model that has to be transformed into the token model. So the GPT-3 itself, this model has almost several variations and, if and the image you are seeing at the screen, you will be able to see that the parameters are from almost 120 million all the way to 170 billions and you can also see that the number of D models or we call them the decoder layers the total number of decoder layers 
and within the GP3, you will see that the decoder layers are from 12 all the way to 96. And the previous GPT-1 was also having the 12 decoder layers or the decoder hats. So the second topic we have covered, understood the GPT-X models, the size and the variation which actually gives the power to the chat GPT and in the third step we are going to understand how the chat GPT was trained. We could take the chat GPT training into the three different steps. Whenever you are going to look into the more details about the chat GPT or GPT model, you are going to see that a concept called the RLHF, reinforcement learning with human feedback. Human feedback is very important, means the, not only the reinforcement learning where the re, uh, reward model is designed, but the human feedback was also added in that context so that the guarantee for the correct or the actual results can be fine-tuned correctly. So the step one is SFT or the supervised fine-tuning. Fine-tuning means the training a model using the newer data set which is already being trained. So taking a pre-trained model and training it with a new data set. Supervised means the information what we are providing has question and answer means whatever we want to achieve from the model that information is also available in this training data set. So supervised fine tuning is used for the chat GPT. So our data set is actually the conversational data set or the data set has a prompt. So we have prompts data set which is used to fine tune the model which is pre-trained. So taking a pre-trained model, fine tuning it using a prompt data set. So if you have prompt data set, you are going to have lots of prompts and these are the P1, P2, P3 to the Pn. So these are the prompts. And our objective is that when SFT or this uh, supervised fine tune is happening, objective is to get the desired output and keep training until a certain degree of desired outputs are collected or be generated by the your model. That is the step one. In the step two, we are actually using the human ranking of the results. So we could say human ranking means whatever model is generating the results, the second step, we are generating the human ranking and by combining the human ranking, a reward model is created. In the third and the last step, we take the new prompt. This new prompt is actually using the previously supervised fine-tune training. So combining the SFT plus method called the proximity policy optimization PPO, the output is generated. Combining PPO, so PPO helps to make sure the results coming out from the for the new prompts are coherent and possibly correct depending on what the need is and after the output is generated the next step is to apply the reward model in it which calculates the, the results so it calculates the reward or results and finally this data has been sent back to the so the result which is coming out from the reward model has been fed back into the process and where the combination of the supervised fine tuning plus the proximity policy optimization, the results are fine tuned at higher degree. And this is how all combining these three steps, a chat GPT model has been trained. So that is something what we have covered in the step three is the chat GPT training. So for those who are new to chat GPT, my objective was to give a refresher so they could understand what is chat GPT, what is the role of GPT models as of now based on all the variations and finally how the chat GPT was trained. So this could be the foundation for learning various new things which we are going to learn in further videos related to 
chat gpt large language models and as well as the generative ai i hope you enjoyed the content i do appreciate your time thank you so much for it and i'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video until then thank you so much